I need to invite a very key person to the maker culture and the open hardware movement. He and the other co-founders happens to create a very simple board, but enable a lot more people to be able to turn their, fa their passions into reality. And I keep inviting him for many years to come to the Maker Fair. And we made it today. Let's welcome Massimo Benzi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm really glad to be here. It's great to be here. I think it's, you know, this Maker Fair is very important in the history of the Maker Movement because it's, um, it's a moment where, you know, the, the movement has developed in many parts of the world. And then China developed its own maker movement. But it's almost like there are two, you know, different maker movements in a way. When, and there's not enough communication. So I think it's very important, this maker fair is very important to create a communication between all the makers in the world. You know, sometimes there are barriers of language. Sometimes, you know, people just don't feel too confident about the work they do. And this happens, you know, even in Europe. People are sometimes a bit afraid of showing what they're doing because they feel their projects are not good enough. And then when you look at it, you say, you know, look, this project is really great. You should really talk about it. We should really talk about it around the world. So I think it's important. So I like this <coughs> concept of making together. One of the nice things about makers is that they naturally want to get together and work together. You know, when you, um, you know, I, um, I started the first makerspace, Fab Lab, in Italy. And, um, and again, there was, you know, because I realized there was a, there was a Fab Lab in Afghanistan and there was no, n not one in Italy. So we created one and then naturally a community formed around it. Because when you're building, you want to be together, you want to work together. So I guess, as Eric mentioned, I started with a number of friends. Tom is here in the audience. And uh, so with a group of friends, we started this project called um, Arduino, which sort of filled a niche that was needed in a way, I guess, why the maker movement was developing, which was essentially the access to being able to build with electronics without really having to go through a whole sort of five years degree in electronics. So, you know, this was, it's a picture of one of the first prototypes I built of Arduino. This was not called Arduino yet, it was called Programma 2004, because before Arduino we worked on a number of projects and the first one I worked on was called Programma 2003. So it was really crappy, but it was able to blink an LED. And so the idea that you know, it was able to blink an LED, it was able to show that you could, you know, in a way, master this small device, these microcontrollers that now are becoming incredibly powerful. You can find them in any shape and size, with connectivity or not. So, but they are the core of a lot of the projects that we build. So the microcontroller enabled us to shift some of the complexity in electronics from analog electronics to software, which in a way, it was easier for me to teach to my students. And the same for a bunch of other teachers I talk to and work with. You know, shifting some of the complexity over to software made that transition simpler. And suddenly this thing that was built for students started to be used by a bunch of people and it became the tool of choice for people building, in a way, prototypes. It was, it was essentially designed as a prototyping tool. And we are now a big community. Since we started 10 years ago, the community I designed it for was 100 people. The students that were in the school, that was my first target. And then suddenly, you know, we had, <laughs> we had um, this thing spread like a virus. When you create this kind of technology, they, if, if they're useful to people, they will just, you lose control of them. They just go all over the place. So now we have people all over the place building things with 
with Arduino, but you know, when you, when you talk about Arduino, you have to talk about the whole community. You know, people who are building hardware which is compatible with Arduino. Now you can run Arduino code on, a, on all sorts of platforms. And I wanted to show you some of the numbers of Arduino.cc, which is kind of the official community of, of Arduino. I showed this a few weeks ago, but in one year we had 60 million visits. 21 million visitors. And when you look at the statistics, it's interesting how there's actually not enough people from China coming to the website in a way. The, you know. So in a way, I guess that the fact that most of the website is in English is stopping a number of people from participating in the community. And we have to fix that. But still, 60 million people coming, 60 million visits, so 21 million people coming at least once, it's quite important. And also, I guess one of the key elements of the, Ar the Arduino platform, it's the software development environment. So even if you're using a board which is, you know, you made yourself, you need software to make it run. So you come to the Arduino CC website, you download this. And so since March 10, so that's as exactly 100 and something days, we had 2 million IDE downloads, one every 4.45 seconds. So this clearly goes beyond any of the boards that used to be called official. You know, there's like every source of hardware now sits on top of that. And so there is a large community. This is an event we created called Arduino Day, where communities around the world get together and they organize a free event, self-organized. We had 262 events. And uh, it was interesting. So this is a picture, is a poster made of the picture that we got from all those 262 events. We put them together. And it's amazing. They go from China, India, South America, Italy, whatever. So it, it, is, it is impressive to see when you say, OK, let's just organize an event. You know, 10 years ago, I randomly came up with the name Arduino while I was you know, trying to get some PCB made. And three years later, there is an Arduino day which gathers thousands of people around the world. It's a pretty scary thought. So you know. What we work on is the experience around trying to build projects. You know, like hardware like the one in Arduino was available before. Somebody make a joke about this was high school electronics. Well, you know, I studied electronics in high school, so clearly it is high school electronics. Uh, and so the, the idea is, but it is the experience. What is important when we work with makers is to create an experience that makes it easy for people to learn, to start, to create. So we, you know, we're trying to expand now the IDE to make it simpler. Now, you know, if you get a new board, a new piece of hardware, and you need to make it work, and you don't have the software, you can just now type a few words in the IDE, and this will connect to the network and download all the parts you need. So we're trying to make it if you need libraries, there are thousands of libraries that people have built. We wanted to make it easy for people to find them. It's becoming like an app store. You just got a sensor. You don't know how it works. You type the name of the sensor. You download the library. You're good to go. And we don't charge money like on the other app stores. So it's all community done. Um, yeah, so trying to help people manage the software. and. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to work now, work on is, again, we realized more and more is about community, more and more is about making together. So we sort of moved the Arduino development environment to the cloud. And we created this tool that we call Create, which tries to bring together the things that people do on the website. They spend a lot of time on the forum trying to understand what's going on. They try, they look for parts. They try to look for tutorials. They talk to each other. They send messages. So we bring everything together into an interface where we spend quite a lot of time working out the user interface. You know, it's very important. Sometimes, you know, 10 pixels to the right changes a lot the perception that people have about the technology. So it's going to be some kind of a desktop where you log on and you get all the things you need there. 
and you can obviously you can keep documentation next to your code uh, you can embed the you know schematics and you can do all sorts of other things the idea is to try to turn the code almost like into you know you'll be able to embed the code into a website like you embed a YouTube video so it needs to be you can embed your projects everywhere you can capture all a project in one tool but also one of the things that's crazy is that now Arduino is not just about blinking LEDs but there are all these different layers of software. We can now run Arduino from MCUs to real-time operating system, Linux and Windows 10 for IoT. We have networking API. We are working on different types of IoT connections. So we're trying to make building a connected product as easy as blinking an LED. And that's, you know, everybody is trying to build the most powerful uh, IoT platform. And by doing that, they're cutting out 90% of the people that could be creative with that because it, they are all a nightmare to you. So how do you create a great connected devices, device with 12 lines of code? This is what we're trying to do. So we have lots of different partners we work with to try to extend the open source hardware outside of our community to other communities, to other places. And we also made this big move now that we have, we are transitioning the platform to 32-bit. As makers become more sophisticated, you need more powerful tools. So we need to create a version of Arduino which runs on ARM processors as good as they run on the classic 8-bit ones. So this is the first step, is the first Arduino which comes with a debugger on board. So we're going to be adding, we're working right now to add debugging capabilities to the Arduino IDE. So if you come to the Maker Fair in, uh, in, um, in New York in September, you should be able to see some of the results. And we're also working on more connected devices, bringing different features to old, sort of old style Arduinos. But we also worked at expanding the way we do manufacturing. So we announced a few weeks ago that Adafruit is making boards in the US for the US market. And we want to continue with this theme of making products locally. You know, it's interesting to make, make in the USA for USA, make in Italy for, for Italy. And you know, so this is Lemore manufacturing uh, boards in Manhattan. You know, the next door neighbor are doing fashion and she's assembling circuits. So makers are embedding themselves into the crazy, into the least obvious places like, you know, Soho, New York. So what about China? <laughs> so we're in China. So I think, you know, the Chinese makers are underrepresented in the worldwide maker community. And we need to work on that. We need to make sure that the Chinese makers are more visible, the projects you do are more present, people talk about what you do. And see, this is, these are some of the events that happen during Arduino Day in China. So, you know, it means the communities know what's going on. They are working, they're getting together. There are books, you know, this is the person who translated my ar book about Arduino into Chinese. So, you know, there are books in Chinese. There is a lot of knowledge out there. A lot of Chinese makers translated a lot of the things we write in English. They get translated by makers who just want to make it available in, in Chinese. So today we started a little step. We created the first Chinese forum on the Arduino.cc website. So starting from today, you can actually post questions and get help in Chinese on the Arduino.cc website is going to be an interesting challenge for us to manage that, but it is important that you are represented on the most important community. And uh, there's also this other thing that, you know, when you talk about Arduino over here, it's kind of confusing. You never know where the product comes from. This product, which is sort of a low-cost uh, Chinese-made product, says made in Italy on it. And it says official version, but it's what's official. <laughs> but also the question is why write made in Italy on it? You know, why not just made in China for China? Why not being proud? You know, like 
and he could say, why not being proud of being Chinese makers? No, it's, we are moving past this phase. China is moving past. We have to explain to the outside of China that we're, it's no longer about making copies. It's about innovating with China, making in China for China. It's about you know, bringing what you guys are doing out, showing. So you know, we worked on this new brand that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's useful for us so that people can understand that the work that we do as the founders of Arduino has a specific brand that you can recognize in the sea of clones. Uh, so that you can understand it relates to us, that we work on it, that we have values that are attached. So we introduced this in California a few weeks ago. Genuino in Italian means genuine. And we think it's about the genuine values we have and what we believe in open source hardware. And you know, and the, the first rule of the open source community, be awesome to each other. So we need to start to draw a line between who is awesome to each other and who is an asshole. You know, when you draw that line, you can understand which one is the community and which one is the people who are here just because they want to make money. It's a very simple line. So today, we are happy to announce that we are partnering with the most influential makers in China, Seed Studio, to bring these products to the Chinese market, make it made in Shenzhen for China. So here you can see, <laughs> and, and I have the first Genuino board made in Shenzhen, proudly made in China, and with signatures from me, Eric and Tom on it. So it exists. It's not virtual. <laughs> and uh, so here it is. I mean, it's a small step. It's a classic product. We've been making it forever. But I think it's important that we start to use that made in China as a different message, as a positive, strong message about the immense capabilities that Shenzhen has to create products, to invent. And also, one thing that we dropped, if you notice, this is no longer an open source prototyping platform. It's gone. Arduino has stopped being just for prototypes ages ago. It's an open source electronics platform. You build products with it. People have built m companies. People come to me and say, you know, I make a living by designing Arduino stuff, by making projects that are part of the community. So, you know, it's important. So we are launching it today. So today at 12, you can come to the Genuino booth, and I'm going to be there with Tom and, and, and Eric. And we have, have pre-order, uh, and you can order it at a price which we think is going to be is going to make the product um, very appealing for the Chinese makers. So, you no. Know, um, so the the genuine one is going to be at 39 RMB as an introductory pro price. Then, when when we go into full production after the pre-order, it's going to be you know more sort of priced in a different way. But we want to introduce it and make it available. So we have the mega at 99 and micro at 29. So we're going to try to make it priced correctly for the combination of cheap because it's made here, but also not ridiculously cheap because you have to support the people who are actually supporting, fixing, debugging, you know, working, strike a good balance between convenient and supportive of the community. So if you show up at 12, you can start pre-ordering this. And the first people that will pre-order this thing will also be part of a small meetup we are organizing tomorrow morning. So if you come over and you sign up, the first 50 people that sign up can come to this meetup we're going to have tomorrow in a cafe nearby so that we can get to know each other. And uh, yeah, that's been amazing. I'm very proud that we have partner with, with Eric and Seed Studio. They're an important representative of how you do making in China. You're proudly make, made in China and contributing to the rest of the maker community. The, the last thing I want to say before I uh, stop is um, I'm one of the organizers of Maker Fair Rome. 
And we have another Maker Faire coming in October. If you want to come over and show off what you're doing, come over to Rome. It was interesting because in 2013, Eric showed up with Seed Studio in Rome. And everybody was very fascinated about seeing Chinese makers in Rome. And then I, I was looking at this incredible scene that they took pictures of everything. And then a few weeks later, I was at the makerspace here in Shenzhen. And they were showing all the pictures and explaining everything they saw. This kind of ambassadorship is very important. So we're looking for ambassadors that can bring this, the way of making we feel, this kind of passion for making that we have through China and the rest of the world. Thank you.